나처럼 groovy하게 나처럼 groovy하게 You guys know I don't like to sound negative on this channel, but the summer was honestly a hot mess for K-pop. I can barely think of comebacks that have stood out to me, let alone impressed me. I don't know if it's just because the novelty of K-pop has worn off on me, or if my standards have become too high, so let me know if any of you guys are feeling the same way. As always, this review is solely based on my personal opinion, it's just that I haven't found many comebacks I've loved this summer, which is kind of odd since it's usually my favorite season for K-pop releases. Teardrop SF9 Teardrop feels like a cross between Now or Never and Chinese View, but lacks a certain something to elevate it to either song's status. It's a pretty safe follow-up to their Kingdom run, but both the title and the b-sides pale in comparison to their previous high-energy releases. I'll put this under the label of crying in the club music. It's catchy enough for an easy listen, but it's not show-stopping. Right through me. Day 6, even of day. I'll be honest, I tend to forget what this title track sounds like after listening to it, especially since I think the b-sides on this album are much stronger. My favorite songs from the album are From the Ending of a Tragedy and Home Alone, but the album is, dare I say, one of Day6's best releases since 2019. Beam Beam, Soyeon I was actually pleasantly surprised with this. I wasn't expecting Soyeon to go for this pop-punk sound or release a sort of quirky music video. But even though the style is far from Idol's concept, it feels very much authentic to her. While I wouldn't call it a standout summer anthem, it infuses a lot of fun into the themes of disillusionment and recklessness associated with entering your 20s. Weekend, Taeyeon I absolutely love Taeyeon, and I love retro K-pop songs, but the chorus is a bit flat which makes this song forgettable in my opinion. It feels like something that would play at H&M. It's catchy in the moment, but not to the point where it leaves a lasting impact. I was really surprised to see her promoting this song though, I've definitely missed seeing her on stage. Permission to Dance, BTS I'll be honest, I'm tired of Big Hit or HYBE's English releases. I thought Dynamite was fine, I actually really enjoyed Butter, but Magic and Permission to Dance use the same formula and it's become boring. It's always a similar retro-inspired melody coupled with basic, cheesy lyrics using a copious amount of vocal processing no one needed. I don't say this to sound mean towards BTS, I'm saying it because there's so much variety and meaning behind their Korean releases, and even if I don't like a song, I can at least appreciate the artistic integrity behind it. But their English releases just make them seem like a bland cookie cutter group, and if I was exposed to them through this, I wouldn't find them interesting. Rose, Dio. I was expecting Dio to go for a more R&B influenced sound like in What Is Love, so I guess I kind of set myself up for disappointment when he ended up releasing a simple pop ballad. However, I am an absolute sucker for his voice. He's my favorite male vocalist in K-pop, so it did end up growing on me. The song very much gives me Disney Channel protagonist is too shy to ask their crush to the prom so they end up writing a song for them energy, but Dio's delivery is just so endearing that I don't mind how cheesy it is. I'll also probably be listening to Empathy more now that I'm in the need of some chill background music while I study. Because Dreamcatcher In a month full of almost nothing, Dreamcatcher's comeback felt like reaching an oasis in a desert. Because it's far from their most memorable title track, but I think the song's minimalism works well with the concept. 
The twinkling music box inspired melody pairs well with the creepy yet whimsical sets and offers something innovative to their discography while still incorporating their classical rock elements. The whole mini album is fantastic and showcases their versatility from Airplane, which feels like a classic summer K-pop b-side, to Whistle, which gives off old girl group vibes, to All Day Long, whose warm city pop sound feels perfect to relax to. Rum Pum Pum, Golden Child. I definitely wasn't expecting Golden Child of all groups to go for a Latin pop party anthem. Most of their songs have had more of a cinematic feel to them, and it's pretty clear that their company is pushing some sort of storyline through their music videos. Listening to the song makes me feel like they should be partying on a beach, which makes the actual storyline of them recovering from the zombie apocalypse or something feel a bit disconcerting. I can't say that I'm in love with the title, I do think the chorus is a bit underwhelming, but I've often found myself enjoying their b-sides more anyways. Their Game Changer album is definitely worth a listen, I especially love Fanfare and Spell, and Bottom of the Ocean is fun even though some of the lyrics are a bit… questionable. Dum Dum, So Me. I've seen so many people talk about how they hate this song, and I can understand why, but for some reason I actually kinda like it. Objectively speaking, it's not a great song. It uses the same stale formula from almost every Blackpink title track. I understand why fans are disappointed as this was her first comeback in over a year, adding to a solo catalog of only three songs. I did think the concept was cute though, and for what it's worth, it's catchy. I just have to tune out the second verse since the rap is just… it's not it. After Midnight, Astro This is one of Astro's best title tracks in a while. I'm happy to see them putting all that Chao Nwu K-drama money to good use. The song is everything a great K-pop song should be. It's playful and fun with a groovy chorus that will be stuck in your head through those warm summer nights. The mini album is also great, I've had Footprint on repeat, and I'm glad they made a small video for it too. While I've personally been happy with Astro's changes in concept, this made me realize how much I love their older style as well. Holiday Party, Weekly I don't think I realized this was an official comeback until a while after it was released. Holiday Party is fine as a song, but it's quite lackluster as a title track. It reminds me of My Second Date by Red Velvet, which is probably one of their more forgettable b-sides in my opinion. It doesn't quite live up to the status of the effervescent Tag Me or the nostalgic after school. Unlike those songs, Holiday Party kind of stagnates between the verses and the chorus, and since there's so little changing in the background of the song, the repetitiveness of the lyrics feels boring instead of catchy. Shut up buckle crazy hot, one us. I know this wasn't an official comeback, but wow, one us have really managed to impress me this year with their projects. So according to the top comment on the video, this was released before their debut with One We, and I did find a video of them performing it, but the song was called Shut Up Bako Crazy Ho. I don't think they intended for it to give Call Me Daddy energy, so I think changing the title was a good move. This honestly could have been a full-fledged title track. I love how certain elements of the song take on a more playful tone, like those jaunty piano chords, which makes the whole theatrical concept feel campy and fun. You can't sit with us, Sun Me. I was so excited for this comeback based on the teasers. I do enjoy a good horror-inspired concept, and the Y2K aesthetic of the video was the icing on the cake. I absolutely love the music video, but compared to Sunmi's other legendary title tracks, this just fell a bit short to me. 
I know this is probably beginning to sound repetitive, but the chorus just didn't feel memorable, and I hate this trend of soloists cramming unnecessary rap verses into their song when it's not their strong suit. Popping. On and off. This is one of the few on and off songs that just hasn't really clicked with me. There's nothing wrong with it, but I guess it's just a matter of personal preference. My favorite titles of theirs are We Must Love, Complete, and Beautiful Beautiful, which I think are far more dramatic than the sparkly, carefree popping. I still have no idea what's happening in their music video, so if someone would like to enlighten me, please do so. But I must say On and Off is one of the few groups whose storylines I actually really enjoy seeing unfold. Their music videos have always had great quality, and since they've actually established their universe during their debut, it doesn't feel like their company is just trying to shoehorn a plot in because it's the trend now. Thrill Ride, The Boys The song honestly feels like a discount version of Follow Me by Cherry Bullet, and that wasn't even a title track. I really love the concept of Thrill Ride, the performances are really enjoyable to watch, and I think this playful vibe suits their group image well. But the song doesn't build to anything, only the rap verses and the bridge break up the monotony of the melody. I'll keep waiting patiently for another song like No Air, I guess. Queendom, Red Velvet I love Red Velvet. You know I think their discography is untouchable. So after waiting a year and a half for new music, I was expecting them to do something inventive and pull K-pop out of its slump. But nope. I don't dislike Queendom. In fact, I do kind of enjoy it now. But I don't think I would have given it a chance to grow on me if it had been released by anyone other than Red Velvet. The melody is too simple for my tastes, and while the members' impeccable vocals elevate the song to an extent, I doubt it will have the same kind of impact on Red Velvet's fandom that songs like Psycho or Red Flavor did. I did enjoy the mini-album, it's not their best, but it's a solid addition to their discography. Pose is definitely still the highlight. I love the contrast between the song's different sections. It makes that glorious chorus seem even more majestic, and their chanting in the post-chorus feels so fun. Loser equals lover, I don't even know if I saw that right, by TXT. I would have completely forgotten about the song had it not been for the novelty of TXT dropping multiple F-bombs in the song. I don't think it's poorly made, it's just that I prefer their last comeback which had a similar concept. Again, I really wish Big Hit would stop with the excessive vocal filtering. Like, it made sense for the dreamy, ethereal blue hour, but it sounds almost robotic on a rock-inspired track. I also do not understand what lover with a dollar sign is a loser is supposed to mean? Like, is that just some sort of inside joke that I'm missing? I think if you enjoy second gen boy group music, you'll like this, but it's not quite my cup of tea. Wave, CIX. CIX has steadily been growing on me, though I can't say I'm in love with Wave yet. I do think it's a good addition to their discography. The song feels like it visually contrasts with their last comeback despite having similar messages. Cinema is both visually and sonically warm, feeling like wrapping yourself in a warm blanket on a cold day, whereas Wave feels cool, like dipping your feet into the crisp ocean in the middle of a sweltering summery day. I don't love the song as much as I love Cinema. I think it's a pretty average summer K-pop release but I think it makes sense as a follow-up to showcase their diversity. They honestly have some of my favorite videos in K-pop though. I definitely wonder what their music video budget is. Thunderous, Stray Kids. 
A lot of Stray Kids' newer release just haven't really been up my alley. It's nothing against them, I just don't really like the very in-your-face, boisterous style that they're using now. This definitely felt like a rehashed version of God's Menu, but I honestly don't think it's a huge problem. They release so much music that having two similar songs isn't a big deal. I could see myself warming up to this with a couple listens, but I probably wouldn't listen to it often. More just as a hype song or <laughs> to keep myself awake while studying. After We Ride, Brave Girls In a year that hasn't been kind to many groups, Brave Girls' music has been a beacon of hope for the future of K-pop. While their whole Summer Queen mini-album was absolutely phenomenal, I've gotta say, this is probably my favorite comeback of theirs yet. After We Ride offers a no-frills, stripped-back side to Brave Girls, which we haven't quite seen before. The song elevates its predecessor, We Ride, by infusing it with a newfound sense of emotion. While the lyrics feel melancholic, there's this lingering sense of optimism in the melody. It's in listening to songs like this that I feel a bit astounded by the power of music. Despite the language and cultural barriers, the song managed to make me feel something. And at the end of the day, that's what I think truly makes a great song. Its ability to resonate with someone's emotions and touch their heart. Door, Kwon Unbi. The song feels like a cross between Minso's Is Who and I Use Coin, which are both songs that I absolutely adore. I think I'll enjoy this the more I listen to it. I do really like jazzy K-pop songs, but they always take a while for me to warm up to. I think it was a smart move to promote Unbi as a soloist. Her style doesn't seem to fit in Rocket Punch's releases. Plus, I think after seeing her as a leader in Eyes One, it would be weird to stick her in another group. Spicy. CL. Despite rap not really being my thing, I've actually enjoyed most of CL's releases. Spicy, however, left more of a sour taste in my mouth. I think the biggest problem I have with the song is the instrumental track. It just keeps repeating the same few notes over and over again, and it just feels annoyingly overpowering. The chorus is also quite grating, and the bland lyrics do the song no favors. Overall, it definitely feels like a step down for her previous, more personal releases. If you're into hypey flex songs, you might like this, but it's just not my taste in music. Outsider, B2B. I was super hyped for this comeback. B2B definitely impressed me the most out of all the groups competing on Kingdom, and I found myself falling in love with a lot of their songs once I finally gave their music a chance. Unfortunately, Outsider fell a bit short of my expectations. While I love the suave, sophisticated video atmosphere, I just wish they had gone a bit bolder with the actual song. Kingdom made me fall in love with Blue Moon, which I think they kind of tried to emulate with this release, but the instrumental track on that one is just so rich that Outsider pales in comparison. It's not a bad song, I just think that they've released better. Hate That, Key featuring Taeyeon. This is literally my dream collab. Ki and Taeyeon are two of my favorite K-pop soloists. I genuinely am upset that Ki's debut album never got the recognition it deserved. I think I had it on repeat for like a solid month. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is just a pre-release and I think it's a great song to usher in his new era. I like the continuity between the visuals in this and Forever Yours. The song isn't anything particularly innovative, but I think their voices blend well together and convey the song's emotions. I know I didn't get to include several artists in this video, I was going to have more, but I honestly got tired and I wanted to get this video up while I still have the time to edit. 
If there's a release you want to know my thoughts on, feel free to ask about it in the comments. Overall, I feel like I can't pinpoint a definitive song of the summer. I think Chimat Param and Alcohol Free are probably the closest, but compared to 2020 which gave us Summer Breeze, 2019 which gave us Boogie Up and Wave, and 2018 which gave us Power Up and Shine amongst many other songs, I just feel like this year was pretty dry. I enjoyed certain other comebacks like Don't Fight the Feeling, but they didn't really give me summer vibes if that makes sense. There were some great albums released in June and August, but the concepts just didn't feel very exciting to me. Again, maybe it's just because I've gotten a little too used to the K-pop release cycle, so I'm curious to see if you guys share any similar sentiments. As always, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what your favorite summer comeback was in the comments.